welcome to a new series on critical reasoning this was massively in demand lot of you have been asking this so here we are all right my name is massey and we are going to do critical reasoning now those of you who have already watched the deductive logic videos or the deductive reasoning videos would find lots here which will be familiar however it is not necessary to have watched them uh, i will try to keep these videos as independent as possible but my recommendation would be my advice would be that please go and watch those because then this will make so much more sense but if you don't want to for whatever reason uh, you can straight away watch these all right so let's begin now one of the first things that uh, is important when we want to do critical reasoning is the meaning of this word even in deductive logic is the meaning of this word called argument now colloquially meaning in everyday usage of the term argument has a completely different meaning so suppose i ask you what do you think an argument means so your reply would be difference of opinion people fighting each other people pulling hair people calling names and so on now that's correct that is the usual meaning of the word argument however in reasoning whether it is critical reasoning or deductive or even logic per se the meaning of the word argument is uh, different meaning it is more specific and what is the meaning of the word argument the meaning of the word argument is when a conclusion is reached with the help of some data now the official word for conclusion is conclusion uh, but the official word for data or evidence or facts is premise so let me revise this formally an argument in reasoning is when with the help of some premises you reach a conclusion all right so that that is there is an argument now premises could be two or more that uh, is okay in syllogisms it is two but in critical reasoning it could be anywhere from one to i don't know howsoever many uh, so you take the help of few premises and you reach a particular conclusion so let's let's have a definition of these words meaning what exactly each one of them means even though you may have already figured it so what is a premise a premise is nothing but stated facts now the word stated here is extremely important i'll i'll come back to it another way of defining a uh, premise is the reasons given to support the conclusion all right now what is this deal with stated the deal with stated is that you need to distinguish between facts and truths as far as reasoning is concerned so suppose i ask you what is the difference now think about it you can pause the video think now here's the real thing facts may or may not be true so suppose somebody wants to make a claim let's say somebody wants to say that you know india should do a b c if india wants to progress and one reason this person gives is for example india is growing at the rate of 20% per annum growing meaning the population growth then suddenly you might say hang on the fact that you think is a fact is not the fact because indian population is not growing at 20% you know and so on so that is the difference between facts and truths that facts may or may not be true now in real life it uh, you will have to figure that out and you know you will have to verify whether the data somebody is giving is true or not but in critical reasoning it is actually easier in critical reasoning or even in deductive and so on you have to take the premises to be true whether they are true or not in real life is completely irrelevant you have to take the premise or premises to be true to be able to move ahead now why is that that is the case because if that is not the case then you cannot have logic questions meaning everything will fall apart you, you can't make questions if suddenly the premises on which a conclusion rests if, if the premises themselves are not strong enough then everything falls apart so you are not allowed to touch the premises i told this the same thing in the deductive videos also and i'm saying this again that in critical reasoning or deductive reasoning you are not allowed to touch the premises the premises are sacrosanct you have to take them to be true and then you have to move ahead so for example if you are given a premise such as all cats are dogs now you can't suddenly say hang on i i'm yet to see one that doesn't matter if it is given to us that all cats are dogs then we have to take it to be true for us to move ahead okay so it is not important whether the premises are true or not now let's define a conclusion what is a conclusion the conclusion is the claim that is being made you know for which the premises are required 
or the conclusion is the whatever is supposed to be proved uh, in an argument something is supposed to be proved and something helps or supports whatever is supposed to be proved. So, what is supposed to be proved is the conclusion that is the official word for that conclusion. So, let us have a very very elementary example of an argument and uh, so for example, all roses are red, x is a road therefore x is red. So, in this case the first two all roses are red and x is a rose are the premises and based on those premises you reach a conclusion called therefore x is red. Now, there are some indicative words for premises as well as conclusions we will look at that next. What are the clue words to figure out premises and or conclusions? So, for premises the indicator words or phrases are words like because, for, since and phrases like the reason for this is first, second, firstly, secondly, in addition, one more thing and so on you know. So, this is actually commonsensical if you actually think about it when you are trying to make a claim yourself and when you take the help of some evidence to support that claim what kind of words will you use you know. So, those are the indicative words for premises and similarly when you want to reach a conclusion what kind of words would you want to use? Would not you use words like therefore, thus, hence, so on you know. So, these are the common words some more words would be must, cannot, should, should not you know. So, just think about it when, when you are trying to form some sort of an argument and by argument remember now we are not talking to, sorry talking about the word argument in the colloquial sense we are talking about the word argument in the sense in which it is used in C, CRN and uh, deductive. So, when you are trying to make an argument which means you are trying to come up with some sort of a claim with the help of some data what kind of words will you use for either or for each ok. So, that is the thing. So, <clears throat> there is one more clue for conclusion in critical reasoning at least which is that in 90 percent of the cases the conclusion will be the last sentence of the argument. Remember argument is that entire thing which includes the premises and the conclusion after an argument you get the question in critical reasoning. So, <clears throat> in critical reasoning para before the question part usually the conclusion will be the last sentence. Sometimes it will be the first sentence, but the wordings you know words like must, should not, cannot uh, they will tell you whether a sentence is conclusion even if it is in the beginning. Very very rarely a conclusion sentence is somewhere else you know somewhere in the middle, but again because of the help of some words you will always be able to figure out whether a particular sentence is a conclusion or a premise. But the good news is that more often than not the conclusion will be the last sentence all right ok. Now, <clears throat> there is one more thing which is extremely important something again I have discussed in um, deductive classes and that is uh, an argument may be valid or it may be invalid. Now, there is a commonsensical way to understand this and there is the official formal way to understand this obviously, we will look at the formal way. It may clash with the commonsensical way, but it ought to I guess because otherwise if, if we cannot uh, do these things in real life then what is the point it will just become a theoretical exercise which will be completely useless. So, anyway uh, the definition of a valid argument is that when the premise is given are sufficient or enough to reach a conclusion. What that means is that the conclusion does not need the help of anything else apart from what is given that is the meaning of a valid argument. Whatever is the support system given to me or given to us for the conclusion that support system is sufficient. It, it can stand on its own to support the conclusion nothing else is required. And similarly from this we can directly move on to what an invalid argument would mean. So, the invalid argument would be when the premises will not be enough will not be sufficient uh, for us to reach a conclusion. So, for example, just a hypothetical example suppose a conclusion requires the help of three premises. Now, in an invalid argument I may be given two premises 
and so the third one is missing and so it is an invalid argument that is the meaning of so, so do not think an invalid argument is completely nonsensical invalid in the uh, everyday usage of the term no in, invalid here has a very specific meaning it just means that you know uh, the premises are not leading to the conclusion something else is required this something else keep that in mind because this is the crux of most of the questions of critical reasoning. So, keep this in mind what I just told you about something is missing keep this in mind. 